Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us start this lecture with a thought process, if the life in this beautiful earth will be extinct in future as expected by the researcher. Due to excess exploitation of natural resources by modern man, then mother nature will try to restore her equilibrium. So, in the last lecture we are basically discussing about chemical equilibrium right and um, we also derived relationship considering uh, the Gibbs free energy how to relate this K p with the Gibbs free energy and uh, temperature and also the universal gas constant and also we express the equilibrium constant in terms of partial pressure and also the mole fractions right. And today, uh, we will take some example how to apply those things to calculate the equilibrium. So, let us consider this example that is uh, 1 kilo mole of oxygen attains equilibrium in a reactor as per chemical reaction O2 going to the 2 O2. And we will have to determine the mole fraction of O and O2 at <coughs> 3 different cases I have considered. One is 3000 Kelvin, pressure is 1 atmosphere pressure, next is 300 Kelvin and pressure 1 atmosphere pressure and the third one is 3000 Kelvin and pressure 5 atmosphere. What I am doing here? I am basically changing the temperature and changing the pressure that is the idea. Okay. So, if you look at solution, this is basically the reaction is O2 going to O. And also, if it is equilibrium, that means it can uh, 2 O can combined may be coming back to O2, right. So, uh, if you look at, we are basically interested to find out, to find if you look at x O2 and x O, the mole fraction of the O and O2. Right. So, what we will have to do? We will have to use the same thing, eh? right? That is K p. If you look at the at chemical equilibrium, condition we know that K p is equal to E minus delta z t 0 divided by r u t right ok. And we will have to also determine what, what is delta z at temperature for example, we are considering the case of 1 only right this is t is equal to 3000 Kelvin and p is equal to 1 atmospheric pressure right. That means, this t this t is what 3000 Kelvin right this will be 3000 Kelvin and R u is your universal gas constant. So, how we will calculate this delta G T naught, how we will do? If you look at this is N O G I T I O actually this is not O right and at the standard condition, what is your standard condition? 1 atmosphere pressure right minus n o 2 g o 2 t standard condition. And e, uh, we need to and these are what is that gives free energy or give functions at standard condition right gives free energy at STP right standard temperature and pressure. Now, from where I will get these values? 
is it at standard temperature and pressure? No, this G naught right okay, will be function of temperature also right. This will be not standard temperature right, it will be at T and standard pressure. Is it okay? Yes or no? Right. The different temperature it will be different values. Okay. Therefore, the T is given here. Otherwise, it could have been 298 Kelvin. Okay. Are you getting? Now, this from where I will get? I will have to go to the table. Right. Let us uh, look at the table here. In the table generally C p values will be given, H, H f reference will be given, H f naught will be given right and this is G f right values at various temperature. Keep in mind that 3000 3, Kelvin it will be 54327 right kilo joule per kilo mole right and it is uh, 300 Kelvin it will be higher values and O2 being stable species therefore, it will be 0 right. So, in this case what it would be 2 the number of moles is what this one is this is your 2 moles 2 into 5 4 3 2 7 is equal to 1 0 8 6 5 4 kilo joule right. So, we will have to find out what is this K p, K p will be E minus 1086540 and this is basically kilo joule and R u is 8.314 kilo joule right per Kelvin into 3000, I will get this is 0 0.01283, right. So, this is uh, basically you can say that uh, this is your <coughs> equation 1, right. And uh, for this above chemical reaction, this is my chemical reaction. So, what I am using for this to evaluate the equilibrium uh, composition that is uh, what will be K p then? K p will be P naught by P reference pressure, reference pressure is atmospheric pressure. So, I am just writing P a why I am changing now P a because this not O is there you may get confused therefore, I am changing to P a okay. square divided by P O 2 P a right yes or no yes or no right. So, that is equal to if you look at P in O P O is equal to x o into p yes or no this I know this is o not not okay? o. So, I can write down x o square p divided by p a whole square into x o 2 p by p a. So, that is coming x o square divided by x o 2 this will cancel it out. So, p by p a right. This is let us say equation 2. Now, keep in mind that k p value we know this is the k p value that means, this equation this is known this is known right and that is equal to something for this case you know 0 0.0, zero, uh, 0 0.01283 this is known right this is known. Now, this x o is known is not known x o 2 is not known p is known 
in this case what is p this p is one atmosphere pressure right the case is this one na? p is one atmosphere pressure so this is p a so it can be cancel it out but we will be keeping it general because we will have to look at also effect of pressure okay now two unknown are there one equation how we'll solve for that what we will do we will have to use this summation of x i is equal to 1 that is nothing but x o plus x o 2 is equal to 1 right that means x o 2 is equal to 1 minus x o this is equation 3 now we will combine equation 2 and 3 and try to solve it okay so by combining equation 2 and 3 right am i right 2 and 3 so what i'll get i'll get basically kp is equal to x not square into 1 minus x not right in place of x o 2 i am putting 1 minus x p by p a right is not it is it right so what we will do i can write down this as x not square p by p a right uh, plus plus k p x naught minus k p is equal to 0 yes or no let us say this is equation basically 4 and this equation we can solve because it is a quadratic equation we know the solution what is that that will be x is equal to x naught x naught means x o ok not not o and minus you know what is that it would be minus uh, k p is it minus k p right minus k p plus minus k p square 4 p by p naught into minus k p right so divided by 2 into p by p naught yes or no so i will get basically minus k p plus minus root over k p square plus 4 p by p naught k p divided by 2 p by p naught so in this equation if you look at all are known k p is known right this is known p by p a naught is known so you can do very easily if i will substitute those values for case okay i can write down this is 5 for substituting values for case for i right i is what t is equal to 3000 kelvin and p is equal to one atmosphere pressure so therefore p by p naught is equal to 1 and kp if you look at we got 0 0.01283 8, 3. So, for that case, what you will get? You will get x naught is equal to 0 0.107 and x naught to 0 0.893. Right. These values you are getting. Now, if you look at the decomposition of O2 is very, very less even 3000 Kelvin ok are you getting 3000 Kelvin temperature low now I will consider the case 2 right for case 2 what is that T is equal to 300 Kelvin so for that right delta 
uh, and pressure of course, 1 atmosphere pressure. Then similarly, P by P naught will be 1 and delta G naught, if look at delta G T temperature at 300 Kelvin that we are calculating. What it would be? In, this will be basically 2 into G O T not at 300 Kelvin. So, that happens to be these values 2, 3, 1, 6, 2, 8. Okay. So, we will just use that values is equal to 2 into 2, 3, 1, 6, 8, 2 is equal to 4, 6, 3, 2, 5, 6. And if I know these values that uh, you know K P E will be getting what will be the K P values and you will find that X naught K P values you will get for this, this you will get K P values 2 into 22 into 10 power t minus 81 and you will get X will be 4 point 6, 9, 10 power t minus 41 and x o 2 will be 0 0.99. So, these values you are getting. What does it mean? That means, at 300 Kelvin, there is no dissociation at all and this approximately equal to 0, this approximately equal to 99999 nine, 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 nine. maybe that, that that goes on you know uh, what you call 69 uh, let's say 7 93 something it goes you know 41 that means this is approximately equal to 1 no decomposition 298 kelvin nothing will happen you know you can assume that but still why i am saying this still there will be little decomposition that is you cannot measure so it is negligibly small are you getting? So, now we will consider for case 3 temperature 3000 Kelvin and pressure 1 atmospheric. Ah, no, 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 this is 5 atmospheric pressure, right. Now, if you look at we have already done that, right. Kp values we know, Kp will be same, right. So, Kp values will be 0 0.01283 and what will be uh, x naught? x naught will be 0 0.048 and x naught 2 will be 0 0.95104, right. So, what is happening when you compare? That means, this x o was higher at 1 atmosphere pressure and it is lower at this and vice versa. That means, x o 2 <laughs> is higher at higher pressure, right. P upon P will be 1 upon 5? Yes, P by I think P by P a will be 5 because P is 5 and this is this thing, right. Okay. Now, let us summarize these things data and see whether we can you know observe anything in this. So, let us consider the you know I have taken another case also 2500 Kelvin and 1 atmosphere pressure right. At 300 Kelvin 1 atmosphere pressure what is happening to O? O is almost what you call 1 and this is approximately 0. Okay. And when I increasing to 2500 Kelvin, keeping the pressure on atmospheric 0 0.985 and 0 0.15. And when I increase further, the O2 again reduce because it is decomposed into the O 0 0.107. Right. What is the interpretation you can do? That means, when temperature increases, O2 breaks into O, because the reaction is endothermic, you know. 
right and the reaction proceeds in endothermic direction. Endothermic means basically O2 is going to, to O right. So, this is the direction in which it is going that does not mean no reaction is occurring in opposite direction it is occurring, but this side is more. So, therefore, you are getting what you call decomposition of the species right that means O is more right. Now, let us look at consider this case these two cases like one atmosphere pressure and five atmosphere pressure right. Let us say that what we are observing like here if it is pressure is increase this is what you call uh, this is decrease O2 is decomposes less right it is not dissociated that much right O2 remain uh, not dissociated to that extent what is occurring at one atmosphere pressure right. And of course, similarly the O is uh, reduced with the increase in pressure right. Now, when P increases it suppresses the dissociation right. In other words of O2 as O is combined to form the more that means the reaction if you look at in this way it is, but it is predominant in this direction. 2O is going to the O2, right, is more predominant at the pressure, right. So, uh, can you really observe anything? That means, it is whenever the temperature increases, the reaction proceed in this react, this uh, you know reaction in a forward direction predominantly as compared to the backward direction and when pressure increases opposite way and if I change the concentration right okay, at the equilibrium what will happen it will also change right. And if I summarize this thing what do you observe? Are you observing something? When you disturb the equilibrium it tries to regain. It tries to regain and as I told in the my opening remarks from you know this thing that mother nature also will try to get back the equilibrium what it was right. So, that uh, this observation was made and stated by a scientist known as Lee Chatelier right and his principle is when whenever any system at equilibrium is subjected to change of either concentration or the volume or the temperature or the pressure any one of them right. Then system readjusts itself to a new equilibrium to counteract partially the effect of change. it is not the total effect ok right. For example, you might be knowing when we are invaded right by the let us say uh, maybe Greek or the Muslim or the Hoon, then we try to resist. In the beginning we might have lost the equilibrium, but later on we re-establish the equilibrium, yes or no. But unfortunately today there is a cultural invasion, our culture is not being spoiled by the all invaders, keep intact, we have kept intact, but today without our knowledge there is a cultural invasion to this country to the market forces, but we are not aware. If we are aware then we will try to regain our equilibrium. So, I would urge upon you people to look at this thing. This is of course, chemical equilibrium, but we should also look at it right. That means, whenever a system in equilibrium disturb it will adjust itself to oppose the effect of change right and that we call it as a equilibrium nature as and this is this is the physical laws and we are all subjected to physical laws so also our mind right. So, therefore, we need to re-establish our equilibrium by opposing the cultural invasion which is spoiling our country at this moment ok. So, that means any change in status quo pro prompts an opposing reaction in responding to it. 
so therefore uh, we need to do and and in the next lecture i will find out how we can uh, carry out this analysis of finding out equilibrium composition in a systematic manner right and then i will take an example okay thank you very much uh, we will stop over here